Maptitude mapping software is designed to complement all of the work that you do in Microsoft Excel. Maptitude can read and write Excel files so that you can easily perform geographic analysis on your spreadsheet data and use your results in either platform. This tutorial will show you a number of ways that you can use Maptitude with Excel and unleash new analysis possibilities impossible with a spreadsheet alone. For example, here I have an Excel workbook that contains a worksheet with customer data that includes addresses and sales volume, and a second worksheet with the addresses of my stores. Maptitude makes it easy to map my data in several ways. The first thing I will do is click the New File button and choose the Map option to launch the Maptitude Create a Map Wizard. Create a Map Wizard gives you start to finish assistance in creating a general purpose map or a map of your data. The first thing to do is browse for the Excel file that contains the data. And I'm going to work with the customer worksheet first and click Next. Maptitude shows you the fields in your data that it found for mapping. You can verify and change the fields if necessary, but in this case they are correct, so I will go ahead and click Next. And now choose how to use your data in the map. First, let's make a map that shows the postal codes with the data attached. And choose a type of theme. In this case, let's create a color theme that shows the total sales in each postal code. Maptitude examines the customer data in the Excel file, determines the total sales of the customers for each postal code, and opens a map with a color theme showing the results. Postal codes shown in dark green have the highest total sales, and postal codes shown in pale yellow have the lowest total sales. Now let's use Create a Map Wizard again, but this time let's geocode the individual customers on the map. Again, I'll choose to create a new map. And notice that Maptitude remembers the source customer's worksheet, so I can go ahead and click Next. And click Next again. This time I will choose the first option to locate the customers by address, zip code, or city. And I'll check this box to add the customer point locations to the open map. Maptitude requires a unique ID for each customer at Geocodes. Since I do not have an ID field in my customer worksheet, I'll go ahead and have Maptitude create one for me. I'll save the geocoded customer locations to a Maptitude Geographic file named Customers. And I'll have Maptitude use a scaled symbol theme so that the customers with higher sales will be shown with larger symbols. Maptitude uses the address information in the Excel spreadsheet to place a point for every record. In this case, of the 1,341 customer records in the spreadsheet, Maptitude was able to locate 1,325 using the address and zip code. One record was located using the address and nearby zip code because perhaps it had no zip code or an incorrect one, and 15 records could only be located by approximate locations within the appropriate zip code, perhaps because these addresses were post office boxes or were missing street address information. When I click OK, Maptitude redraws the map with the geocoded customers, scaled to show their volume of sales. These symbols are a little large, so I'll click the Scaled Symbol Theme button and reduce the sizes for the low and high values. Now I'm going to repeat the steps to geocode the stores that were on the second worksheet in the Excel file. This time I will need to browse for the Excel file again and choose the Stores worksheet. And again I will add the stores to the existing map. When I click OK, Maptitude adds the two store locations to a new layer in the map and zooms to show the locations. I will click the store symbol here in the Display Manager so that I can change the style from the default and differentiate the stores from the customers. I'll change the symbol, the size, and the color. And finally, click the Previous Scale button to see all of the customers again. I have now used the data in the Excel file to show which zip codes have the highest sales, where all the customers are located and what their sales are, and where the stores are located. Now I can use Maptitude to perform some geographic analysis of my customers and get the results back into Excel. 
First, I want to find exactly which of my customers are within 5 miles of one of the stores and create a new Excel spreadsheet of just those customers. I'm going to display the drawing tools by choosing Tools, Drawing Toolbox. And I'm going to use the Circle tool and click on the map at one of the store locations. Enter 5 in the Radius box and click OK. Maptitude draws a circle with a 5 mile radius on the map. Now, if I right click on it and choose Export to Excel, I can create a new Excel file of just the customers within that 5 mile circle. And if I switch to Excel here, you can see the new spreadsheet. When I scroll down, you can see that there are 143 customers within 5 miles of the store I chose. The second worksheet shows the stores within that circle, in this case just my store number 1. The third worksheet is data from the color theme of sales on the zip codes. Any zip code that is at least partially within the circle is listed in this first column, and the sales for those zip codes is shown in the second column. Finally, Maptitude computes some demographic data for the area that I drew. For example, here is the estimated household income for the population living within 5 miles of that store, and here is the estimated population. The next analysis that I'm going to do in Maptitude is determine which store is closest to each customer and how far away that store is. I'm going to make my customer layer the working layer and then open a new data view. And I'm going to add two new fields to the layer. I'll call these fields closest store and distance. And I'll make the distance field a numeric field. Now I'll scroll to the far right of the data view so that we can see the two new fields. Highlight the closest store field, right click and choose Fill. I'm going to use the Tag option and choose the store layer so as to tag each record with the name of the nearest store. Then I'll highlight the distance field and again using the store layer, tag it with the distance to the nearest store. Now, as I scroll down, you can see that each customer record has the name of the closest store and its distance away. I can save this data view to an Excel file so that I can have a spreadsheet of customers that includes the information on the closest store and distance. Simply choose File, Save As, choose Excel Worksheet as the file type, enter a name for the new Excel file, and click Save. If I open the worksheet in Excel, you can see that it has all of the original information from the original customer Excel file, along with new fields that show the longitude and latitude of each customer, the closest store, and the distance to that store. Now I've shown you how to export data to Excel by drawing a circle and by saving a data view. But let's suppose that I want to know about the customers near all of my stores. Rather than potentially drawing many circles, I can use the buffer tool to compute multiple circles at once and then export their data to Excel. First, I'm going to remove this circle from my map by right-clicking on it and choosing Delete. Then make the store layer my working layer, and click this button. I'll make 5-mile buffers, and check this box so I can compare the buffers around each store, name the buffers with the store name, and check this box to compute the demographics. Enter a name for the file that will contain the new buffer layer and click Save. Maptitude creates 5 mile buffers around all of my stores. It redraws the map to include the new buffer layer and opens a data view showing the calculated demographics. I'm going to close the data view and make the buffer layer the working layer in the map. Data from area layers that you create with Maptitude, such as buffers, can be exported to Excel by clicking the Export to Excel button.
This new Excel file created from the buffers shows you on this tab all of the customers that are within five miles of one of the stores. If I scroll down, you can see that 468 of my customers are within five miles of a store. The second tab again shows my stores, and the third tab again shows the zip codes that are at least partially within five miles of a store. And finally, the overlay tab shows the calculated demographics. Here you can see, for example, that the income is higher around store number one, but significantly more people live around store number two. The next thing I want to do is study the customers based on the driving distance to the stores. Click this button to open the Drive Time Rings toolbox. I'm going to click this button to use my two stores as the locations around which to build the Drive Time Rings, and create three rings at 10 minute intervals. Now before I create the rings, I'm going to do one more thing, which is to include the customers in my ring analysis. So I'll click the Settings button, and click this button to include my customers in my demographic analysis. For each ring, I'm going to count the features in the customer layer and sum the sales of those customers. Now I can go back to the Drive Time Rings toolbox and click this button to create the rings. Maptitude uses the Drive Time information for the streets to determine how far you can go from a store in 10, 20, and 30 minutes, and it adds those rings to the map. I'm going to move the toolbox out of the way and hide the zip code layers so we can see the rings a little bit better. I'm also going to turn on the water area and street layers for reference in the map. So now you can see that the vast majority of the customers are within 30 minutes of a store. All of the customers within the red center rings are within 10 minutes of a store. The customers within the next ring are 10 to 20 minutes from a store. And the customers within the purple outer ring are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. Next, I'm going to click this button to generate a report, which will include the demographics of the population within each ring and will include the number of customers and volume of sales in each ring. If I scroll down, you'll see first the map, and then the demographics. For example, the median income of households within 10 minutes of a store is approximately $99,000. The population within 10 minutes is approximately 189,000, with another 797,000 people living 10 to 20 minutes from a store, and another 988,000 people living 20 to 30 minutes from a store. And finally, if I scroll to the bottom, you can see that there are 142 customers within 10 minutes of a store, 450 customers that are between 10 and 20 minutes from a store, and 423 customers that are 20 to 30 minutes from a store. You can export all this data in the Drive Time Rings report to Excel by choosing File, Export Document, and choosing XLS or XLSX File. I'll go ahead and click Yes here to open the Excel file. And you can see that the Excel file contains a picture of the map and all of the calculated demographic and customer data for the drive time rings. Finally, I'm going to close this Excel file and all of the Maptitude windows and show you one last way to use your Excel data in Maptitude. When you import data into Maptitude, changes that you make in the original Excel data will not be reflected in Maptitude unless you also make the change there. If, instead, you open your Excel file without importing it and join it to a map layer, then changes that you make to the Excel data will be reflected in the map. To illustrate this, I'm going to start by creating a general purpose map of Massachusetts. and zoom in to where most of my customers are located. Next, I'm going to open the original Customer Excel worksheet, and make sure the import box is not checked. Maptitude displays a data view of the Excel worksheet. Notice that the fields are all green, indicating that they are read-only. I cannot edit the data, or add fields, or tag the records as I could earlier. Next, I'm going to return to the map and turn on the zip code layer. Then I'm going to click the Join button, and join that zip code layer with the customer data.
The joined data from the Excel workbook are shown at the far right of the data view and, for example, if I sort these by sales and then scroll back to the beginning here, you can see that these are the zip codes with the highest sales. I'm going to make the zip code layer the working layer in the map and create a color theme of the average sales by zip code. And while I'm at it, I'm going to change the colors used in the theme and click OK. I'm going to zoom in here and change the zip code labels to show the total sales and the average sales. Now you can see, for example, that the zip code 01451 has total sales of $6,930 and average sales of $1,732.5. What I'm going to do is save this Maptitude workspace with the open map and data view. And then close all of the open windows. Now I'm going to go back to the original customer workbook in Excel, and I'm going to change the sales values for customers located in the 01451 zip code. And now I'll save the file and go back to Maptitude. When I reopen the workspace and refresh the map, you can see that the label now shows the total sales to be $2,000 and the average to be $500. And the color of the zip code is now pale yellow to reflect the revised average sales value. And that wraps up this video on using Maptitude with Excel.